G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday evening here in Australia and the market has taken an even bigger dump but there's something very interesting that's going on and I'll get to that very shortly. But we can see down another 11%. So as I said, I, expect, I did suspect that uh, the total market cap would dip under uh, $2 trillion and we have now to see whether we've hit the bottom and we come back. Look, scary thing is we definitely could go a little bit lower and I'm not going to be overly surprised if we go lower but I'll show you really where I kind of think it's going to bottom out because it really is based on Bitcoin. It's whatever Bitcoin does. If Bitcoin hits a bottom uh, and rebounds, then everything else is going to rebound with it. If Bitcoin hits a bottom, travels sideways a little bit for a while, the altcoins will generally do pretty well. We've already experienced that, but when Bitcoin dumps pretty hard, we've got a lot of other stuff dumping pretty hard as well. But anyway, let's move on and have a look. Bitcoin dominance still 38%. ETH dominance has dropped though a little bit, so 17.8%. And gas prices now at 91. They were a little bit higher before, so they are coming down. But there's a lot of panic at the moment, but it's not the big money. It's not the smart money that's doing this. It is literally the new money slash dumb money that is selling at the moment. The big guys aren't panicking and getting out, but there is news stories out there that's gonna make people think that the big companies are gonna get ready to do that. This happens. This happened back in 2016, it was the China FUD. And now we've got even more China FUD going again, but it's actually nowhere near as bad as what people are kinda of trying to make, kinda of trying to, <laughs> are trying to make it out. It's, it's nowhere near that bad at all. And we'll have a look at that very shortly as well. But as we can see, like total red here. Now, Bitcoin is at 40,000, it dipped down to 39,000, which is a very interesting level. And again, we'll have a look. But we can see, down, down is just a sea of red. Has anything done well? And I can tell you some things have, had, have done okay at the very least. There we go, Polygon continuing to rise, $2.41. This just knows no bounds, it is unbelievable. Now, don't get me wrong, it will have a retracement at some stage and it'll probably be a pretty good one. And I did sell a little bit of uh, my Polygon. I sold it around $2.20, uh, I think, or something like that, maybe even a little bit before, around the $2 mark exactly. But I only sold a little bit and it was stuff that I'd made from staking rewards. So I'm real, you know, I didn't, I haven't lost any Polygon as such. I still have what I have. So I'm really happy with that. Phantom, small gain. Uh, and then everything else is, you know, kind of in those single digits and we're getting into the dollars at the moment. So not really many gains at all, hence why it's nearly an 11% down in the market. All right, what's been hit the worst in the top 100? Nexo, Shiba Inu, who would have thought that? Good Lord, it's down 57%. Uh, OKB, Pancake Swap, Gate Token, Nano, Engine. Safe Moon again, you know, I don't know much about it other than I've been hearing that it's a, a Ponzi scheme. So anyway, Telecoin, Horizon, look, lots of big losses there, you know, basically 20, 15% and above. So, you know, pretty steep losses in all fairness, but it's not the end of the world. So we've seen the gains, there weren't really too many. We've seen the losses, they're, they're pretty bad, you know, most sitting around that kind of 15 to 20% range, thereabouts. But let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart and we're going to see what's very, very interesting. I did say, are we going to see it come down and bounce off the 200 day moving average? Let's close in. That is exactly what we've done. That's exactly where it's sitting right now. Now, wick down below and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this can't go a little bit lower. It absolutely can. And I think it could come down to around about here. So I had the line there before, let me put it back in. This is roughly where I think it could come down to, about $32,000. Now I'm not saying it's going to come down to $32,000, but we had a bit of support and resistance here. Now at the moment, it's sitting around about where it's had support and resistance, which is on that 200 day moving average. So I really am hopeful that you know, again, this was a buying opportunity and I said if Bitcoin came down to around the 200 day moving average and, you know, got into the sort of mid to low 30s, I'd be throwing the kitchen sink at it. I already made a, made a purchase today with profits that I'd taken and I'm just going to continue to buy Bitcoin from here on in. As long as it keeps going down, I'm buying it at the moment because I feel 
like it is going to rebound very hard and look it may have already rebounded already again it got down to what was this 38,000 and now it's sitting around that $40,000 mark which is where the 200 day moving average is and traditionally that is one of the best times to buy it now the big players are here at the moment and I think a lot of this is you know institutional kind of driven and not that they're selling at the moment. Don't get me wrong, they are. They do sell a little bit to, you know, pile into everybody else panic selling, and it makes it a little bit worse. But then they are going to be buying uh, up again. That's, you know, that's my personal opinion. It's not financial advice, but I think this is a great buying opportunity. Like I said, I was buying altcoins back in here, but now the Bitcoin's down here. I'm absolutely loading up on Bitcoin, and I'll buy it all the way down to thirty-two thousand. And look. If this is the start of the next bear market, I'm just going to continue to buy Bitcoin all the way to the bottom, wherever that may be, because I don't think it's going to go that low. I would be very surprised if we came down to below $20,000. I really think that would be, I mean, let's have a look. What would that be? From the top down to 20000 a 70% correction. I'm just not sure that's going to happen. I think the institutions are going to be, they already start to be buying it up right here, is what I think. And uh, yeah, I just can't imagine it'll get down. But this is what I'm looking for, kind of 32,000, 31,000. We've got a bit of support here. And again, old resistance became support. So that's where I think we could possibly get down to. But I am kind of hoping that we have hit the bottom because this is what it's done in previous times. The 200 day moving average when Bitcoin got down there it was a great buy and where the biggest financial opportunities were found. But because we got some big players here, I think they might push it a little bit lower. But again, they're not going to sell too much. They're just going to kind of, you know, throw a little bit of fuel on the fire here and there to see how low they can push it down before they get to whatever price they think is really good to buy. So for me, and again, you know, maybe they're thinking 32000 as well or possibly just a little bit lower. But again, I couldn't imagine we're going to go much lower than this. If we got below 30000 I'd probably be ready to admit that this is actually a bear market. But would I now start to panic sell? Absolutely not. I'd start to just buy. And I would buy and buy and buy and I'd be waiting for the next uh, bull market. And again, I don't think we're in a bear market yet. This is just a bearish trend. Again, a good correction. You can go back through the charts. Uh, and I brought this up before. We've had plenty of 30, 40, 50% corrections before inside bull markets. And this currently is a 40% correction. There you go. From top to bottom, 40%. So this is just generally a standard correction for Bitcoin. And I really don't think we're going to go too much lower from here. But either way, this is, like I said, I'm throwing the kitchen sink. If Bitcoin gets down to $37,000, $35,000, I'm literally going to be piling into Bitcoin. Bitcoin's not dead. It's the grandfather of all of these. It ain't going nowhere. And likewise, whatever happens to Ethereum and Polygon and you know other good projects that I really like, I'm going to be piling into those as well. And I will simply keep buying until, excuse me, until we get back to sort of these prices. And then I probably won't be buying anymore because I'm sure I'll have spent all my money by then. But I'll continue to dollar cost average. All right, moving on. There's some really interesting stories. This one is a little bit sad, particularly considering I'm Australian. More than half of Australians think Elon, Elon Musk invented Bitcoin. Uh, that's what a survey said. So not half of all Australians, half of the Australians surveyed. But also 40% of the respondents were unaware that Bitcoin had a limited supply. That doesn't surprise me at all. Bitcoin's not that well known. And when I speak to people about Bitcoin who don't really understand it, they really don't know too much at all, particularly the limited supply and all that. But that half of them, the people in these surveys, think that Elon invented Bitcoin. That's interesting. I don't think he did at all. I, I think there's almost zero chance of that. But look, I've been wrong before about stuff, and I could be completely wrong about that. He's a pretty clever man if he did invent it uh, and pulled all this. But why would he buy, you know, one point five billion dollars worth of it if he invested? Uh, if he invented it, you think he'd have a large enough stack already? But anyway, I'm sure he's a much smarter man than me, and he'd be able to push the price up high and then maybe dump it on people for a whole lot of money. That could be a plan. Although again, I don't think Elon's doing that at all. That's literally just a wild kind of theory. All right. Here's the reason why I don't think we're going into a bear market. Well, one of the reasons. 
ARK Investment tips $20 million into Grayscale's Ethereum Trust. They've just recently done this. This is only a couple of hours old. So they've seen this dip and gone, you know what? Let's get in. And they've gone into Ethereum because they've already got a whole stack of money in uh, Bitcoin Trust. And so now they wanted to add to the Ethereum Trust. This is not what happens in a bear market. These are the really big players. Now, can they get it wrong on occasions? Absolutely. But we've had so many big players buying into this stuff for quite some time. And they're buying in because they see it's still a bargain. Did they want to buy it at 60 something thousand? Not so much. But when Bitcoin got down to, you know, where it is now, 40,000 and Ethereum down to, God, what is it now? Let's have a look. I think it was almost, yeah, there we go. I was going to say under 3,000. So back to 2,900. They're, they're more than happy to buy it at these prices. Nebraska bill to allow banks to offer cryptocurrency passes, uh, services, sorry, passes to final round. This is going to get signed off 100%. Nebraska could follow Wyoming and open its first crypto bank should the bill pass the final round. I think this is pretty much guaranteed and it's uh, going to happen. It's just exactly when. And again, you know, all this fud about things that are happening with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Why would big players, big states and that be doing this if they weren't basically 100% sure or as close as they can, 99% sure that cryptocurrencies aren't going to be banned and things like that? That's why this is happening and that's why I'm buying at the moment. I think this is a fantastic buying opportunity. But that's my personal opinion. All right, Sotheby's NFTs still being sold. So natively digital auction to feature pack crypto punk NFTs. So Sotheby's is hosting a dedicated group auction for NFTs next month. Works from PAC, Robert Ellis and the CryptoPunks collection are among the lots. So again, this space just continues to grow and would people be rushing out to buy these kind of things if the market was really in a bear trend? I don't think so. But look, again, that doesn't mean the people who are buying these know when a bear trend is happening and when a bull market is happening. But I'd say the chances are they probably do have a bit of a clue. And most people wouldn't be trying to sell these in a bear market. They would be waiting for a bull market, which is why these things are being sold. This is just a, a retracement, a correction, whatever you want to call it. I do not believe it is a bear market. All right, here's an interesting one though. And again, it's a bit of FUD, I think, more than anything. OCC signals it may be less crypto friendly than Brian Brooks regime. Acting Comptroller of the currency, Michael Husu, is calling for a review of the cryptocurrency guidance uh, issued by the OCC under his predecessor. So Brian Brooks, I think he was great for the space and I'm spewing he's not there anymore, but he's moved on. Husu has ordered a review of several of the agency's recent auction actions, sorry, including moves that gave it authority to provide cryptocurrency custody companies with banking licenses, so Kraken and things like that. Look, they are going to become the new banks. I don't think there's going to be anything really done about this. They're going to look into it. They might make a few adjustments here and there, but I don't think they're suddenly going to retrace and take a big backward step, particularly when there's just so much money uh, that is involved in this space at the moment. And again, I think a lot of this sort of FUD is coordinated. Big governments and you know big agencies trying to FUD the price because they kind of miss the boat. So they push it all back down with all this stuff. They buy up heavy, hence why I'm buying as well. And then they just ride it to the top and then unfortunately dump on all the new money uh, slash dumb money. Well, that won't be me, but at the moment, I am happy to buy at these prices. Again, more good news. Saxo Bank Arm launches trading of BTC, ETH and Litecoin against major currencies. The offering from Saxo Markets will be available initially to clients in Singapore and Australia. Australia is quite crypto friendly. And again, I've got a story over here about Bitcoin regulation happening in Australia. So a parliament inquiry will investigate to how regulate cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin as part of a push to strengthen the local fintech sector and encourage financial innovation. Not the other way around. And this is here in Australia we're talking about. They're not trying to stifle it and strangle it and, you know, choke it to death and kind of make it go away. Australia is actually leading in this stuff. Now, we haven't got the regulations uh, yet, but they, that's the, it's just the way they talk about it and the way that it's spoken about. Again, they want to strengthen and encourage financial innovation. 
and not looking to go the other way. And other countries will follow suit because if other countries try and go the other way and cryptocurrencies still make it anyway and kind of boom and they've strangled the, you know, the heck out of it, that just limits them and their options and the kind of money and things that they can do. And this is the future of finance in my personal opinion. And I think all these big businesses and countries and that know it. And there's just FUD going on at the moment to bring it back down. Crypto exchange sees fastest Bitcoin flows since Black Thursday in March 20. So this is people panicking and putting Bitcoin into the crypto exchanges at the moment, not taking it out. They're just panicking. But inflows are mainly concentrated on the retail focused Binance, while institutions and, you know, the smart money, not just institutions, but smart money, hodlers and that continue to hold. I've been saying that for the last sort of few days and even sort of week or two now. It's the new money. They heard about all this hype and it's the same thing. Even 2017 had this peak, then it had a bit of a sell-off and it slowed down for a while and people were like, no, nah, cryptocurrencies is this and that. And then they got back into it again later in the year. And I think that's exactly what we're going to see now. I don't think uh, this is done at all. I think we're going to see a good retracement. How much lower we go, I don't know. But it's going to fire back up and we are literally going to push towards you know, 100, 200, maybe $300,000, you know, 288,000 uh, like Plan B's uh, S2F model. That is, you know, still possible, still definitely possible. We spoke about this a little while ago. So now Indian government reportedly considering crypto regulations instead of ban. They've already been talking about this earlier. It was going to be a ban. And now India could be having a change of heart moment on the crypto industry as a new report suggests regulations instead of a ban. They're not going to ban it. They are 100% not going to ban it. There's too much upside to ban it. And if you ban it and get left behind and other countries do extremely well, then you've got to try and unban it and it just becomes an absolute nightmare and a mess. It's like all the FUD at the moment. People are carrying on about, oh my God, China has now stopped cryptocurrencies being used as you know a payment method. So what? How many people out there are actually using their cryptocurrency as a way to pay for things? Bugger all. Maybe some, you know, maybe a few stable coins and things here and there. And again, they're using those crypto cards that people offer. But most people are using them as an investment. They're not going to the local shops and buying stuff with it. And that is even the same in China. So China says you can't use your cryptocurrency as a form of payment. So what? You just sell it and then use that money to go buy whatever you want. It's nowhere near as big as what people are trying to make it out to be. It really is very small. All right, another Australian uh, story here. So from news.com.au. A young rich lister has predicted that more people will be paid in cryptocurrency sooner than you think as tech can as tech companies lead the way. I think this is going to happen as well. He might be a little bit bullish on when he thinks that it's going to happen. So he said, being paid your salary in cryptocurrency could become normal for all Aussies in the next two years. I don't think it's going to happen in the next two years, but I think there is going to be an option within the next five to 10 years to have some of your uh, pay, paid in cryptocurrencies or paid directly into stocks or whatever it may be. I do think that's going to be a way of the future. Now that's the bold prediction of Fred. I'm going to butcher this name, and I apparently, and I sorry, I apparently, <laughs> I I probably will apparently butcher it, but I apologise. Uh, Shabesta, CEO of comparison website Finder, who is the who is leading the charge as one of the first Aussie companies to offer its workers the option to take home some of their pay in cryptocurrencies. I think this is this is going to be the future. I think there's going to be an option for people's pay for little bits of it to automatically go straight into things. Whatever they, there'll be a choice of things, you know, whether it's cryptocurrencies or stocks or shares or, you know, whatever. I think that will become a norm in the future. It won't simply be, first we have to give you your money, now you've got to go and give it to somebody else to put it into something else. That all just becomes too hard. I think you'll be able to do it directly from your workplaces in the future. Now, last but not least, this is very interesting. Now, I am, uh, I do business with BlockFi, I really like them. Uh, unfortunately, this dip didn't happen to me, or fortunately, depending on, what, yeah, depending on how you want to look at it. Sorry, I'm struggling today with the English language again. BlockFi, the crypto lending and trading business, mistakenly deposited large amounts of crypto to user accounts. 
The payments were associated with a promotion they were running in which users would receive bonuses in USD stablecoins. The promotion was intended to be paid out in one lump sum in GUSD, according to their website. Instead, some accounts were paid the amount denominated in Bitcoin, with some receiving over 700 Bitcoin, which is two, sorry, $28 million at current prices. Now have a look at this. A screenshot from one affected user who withdrew the funds shows threat of possible legal action should they not be returned and a payout of $500 should they return them uh, by a set time. He got 701 BTC. Oof. I think you're probably going to have to up the ante block fire. Now, I, don't get me wrong, I think they should be returned. It was an honest mistake. They didn't do it on purpose. That is kind of theft, at least here in Australia. That would be considered theft. If someone accidentally did that, you are obligated to return that. I just think $500 to return $28 million to you. And he, uh, it sounds like he may have already uh, taken the funds out. Yeah, he said a user who withdrew the funds and is now being told that uh, it could face legal action. And I agree with the legal action, but I think a $500... Uh, return for returning twenty-eight million dollars is possibly a little bit a, a little bit light on. I think you could probably add one or two zeros to that. I think uh, BlockFi and look, that's bad luck for you. You did it, so you're going to have to, you know, kind of cop it sweet. Again, I agree that it should be returned, but five hundred dollars is a bit of an insult when someone's returning twenty-eight million dollars. I definitely think a minimum of one zero to possibly two zeros should be put on that because you stuffed up. It's not exactly their fault, but they definitely shouldn't have taken advantage of that. All right, anyway, that's it from me. The market's down. I feel like, again, my personal opinion is this is a great buying opportunity. I'm buying up Bitcoin at the moment. I'm not too worried about the alts because I just think Bitcoin is too good a price right now and it is probably going to rocket back hard from this once it finds the bottom and we may have found it but if not again i think if this isn't the bottom it may get down to around 32 31 thousand dollars and i really th i would be surprised if it went any lower than that but again we've got institutions playing some games at the moment but most of them have probably bought in and around this range there was not a lot of institutions buying sub kind of twenty thousand dollars anyway so they may push it down a little bit lower but I think we're probably going to have found the bottom. Now, a way we can kind of tell is it was a 27 yesterday. Where are we now? 23, getting even lower. It's almost maximum fear. This is generally about the time where you're going to find a rebound. Exactly where, and you're not looking at the number so much, just that we are so far here over on the red. This is the best buying opportunity, and this is usually where it starts to turn. It's when it's all the way over here that you need to be worried and probably taking some profits. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, and I couldn't imagine there is anyone unless they were just shorting the absolute crap out of it. And hey, congratulations to you. That's not my thing, but I'll see you next time.